hello! Today we are doing a book haul and y'all I don't know why I thought this, but I was like, oh, I didn't do, I didn't get that many books in March. I did, I, you know, not that much has come in and out. Well, joke's on me because there's so much more here than I thought there was. I think that part of why I think that I'm not buying as many things is because I'm doing a good job of reading books that are on my physical TBR. So, you know, in terms of the net results, we're doing pretty good, but there's a lot to talk about. But before we dive into that, we need to start by thanking Book of the Month, who is kindly sponsoring today's video. So as you guys know, Book of the Month is a service that I have enjoyed and used for almost five years now. I really appreciate their selections. I appreciate the flexibility in terms of being able to skip months, no muss, no fuss. And it's a service I use pretty frequently. In the haul, you will see the books that I selected from last month. But in case you've somehow missed the memo, Book of the Month scours all of the new releases and titles that are coming up and they select and curate a list of five to seven new titles each month for members to choose from. Your first month is just $9.99 if you use this code and you can pick any of the books that they have selected for the month. If none of them appeal to you, like I mentioned, not a big deal, just skip it and there will sure to be something in the upcoming months that is more appealing to you. But I think part of what I really love is that they do have a very wide selection across genres. And if you know me, I am an omnivore, so I appreciate the sheer variety they have. And I do think that that is reflected in this month's selections, which I'm gonna say of these five, four of them are ones that I either already was thinking about getting to, or once I saw the description, I was like, yeah, that sounds great. The one that I am most excited about and that I had wondered, I've, I've been in several discussions with people where we were speculating that this might end up being a book of the month pick, is Gaiki by Vishnavi Patel. And this is an epic historical type book. The comps I've seen for this are for like Ariadne or Circe and I believe that it is based on Indian history, folklore, magic, etc. So I'm really excited for this one. The cover alone, I mean iconic, beautiful, but this is the one I'm most excited for. However, I am also excited for several of these other ones. So True Biz by Sarah Novick is about a school for the deaf. So sort of just like a contemporary drama there. There is a historical World War II story called The Good Left Undone by Ariana Trigiani. Like a Sister is very intriguing to me. I hadn't heard about it, but it's by Kelly Garrett and it is essentially about a woman who goes missing and her half-sister is convinced something is up, so she is investigating. So you got a little thriller here. And then the newest nonfiction pick from Susan Cain, which is Bittersweet, How Sorrow and Longing Make Us Whole. And she wrote Quiet, which I know was a big hit a few years ago. So these are the picks. This is the one that I'm most excited about, but honestly, I think a lot of these sound pretty great. So with all that being said, if you would like to try your first month with Book of the Month for $9.99, use the code GETFUN and the link below. Thank you once again to Book of the Month for kindly sponsoring today's video. Alrighty, I don't know where to start today because like I said, I went a little ham and some of these are collection things. Some of them I feel less bad about, which I guess I don't feel bad about any of them, but some of them make more sense to me because they are essentially sequels or books that I bought with a specific project in mind. And and uh, also some of them are just randos that I picked up because I did have, does, do other people's workplaces do this? We get like uh, thank you points from people and you can cash them in for like prizes or gift cards or whatever. So I always cash mine in for Amazon. And because I have been working so much lately, I've been getting a lot of thank you points from people. And so I had some Amazon gift card money to burn. And whenever I get that, I try to go for things that I might not have picked up for myself otherwise. So I don't know, maybe let's just start with the random pile that I don't really have like a specific justification for and we can just go from there. Okay, well actually you know what this first one I feel very good about and that is the Ukrainian and Russian notebooks Life and Death Under Soviet Rule by Igort. I saw on Instagram, I think it was Remembered Reads was posting about this. This is graphic novel nonfiction and given what all has been going on in the world I felt like this was an appropriate pick that I'm going to try to get to here in the next few weeks and I love graphic novel nonfiction in general. Like I really enjoy that as a medium and with the recommendation I'm excited to dive into this. I also know that the book Communa Read for May is going to be about the history of Ukraine and Russia, which is something that Jess Owens runs. So if you're interested in that, that's another 
potential avenue that you can join in there. But yeah, I felt like this was a timely pick, so I appreciated the recommendation, and I'm looking forward to getting to it. I also picked up, this is gonna make some of you happy, I think. I picked up my first ever Terry Pratchett book, which is Guards Guard. This is a fantasy mystery. People have recommended the series slash Terry Pratchett to me a lot over the years, and I've just, he's one of those like, ooh, someday, I'll get to that author someday. I feel like I should, that could be a whole video of just someday authors, but I was watching a video uh, that Sean did about Harry Potter, and I actually did a reaction to it that was patron only because I was like, I just can't deal with general comments on this one, but I wanted to talk about it. One of the things he talked about was comparing an element of Harry Potter to something that Terry Pratchett does in this series, and it finally just like really pushed me to go ahead and pick it up. So I am intrigued by this. I'm excited to finally have an opinion on Terry Pratchett. I'm sure Alan from the Library of Alexandria will be very excited to hear that. And then League of Liars by Astrid Schulte. This is a new release from her and I actually enjoyed, oh gosh, Four Dead Queens, which was YA fantasy mystery. I didn't think it was like the best world building or like the best book ever, but it was very entertaining. And this one is also a YA fantasy mystery, but it is our main character taking an internship in a ye fantasy version of a public defender's office which I thought was kind of just a very fun premise. So I don't know. I'm not expecting this to like blow my mind, but I'm expecting this to be very entertaining based on that first book I read from her. Ooh, okay. And then this one I'm very excited about and I would not, this was definitely a, I picked this, I, this was a treat yourself thing with my gift card edge. Um, when I was doing my Instagram secretly picks my TBR vlog, a few people for one of the picks I had guessed mixed media as the theme for the vlog, and they specifically wondered if I was going to read S by J.J. Abrams and Doug Dorst. This is, I, this was not on my radar at all, but then when I went to look it up, because I'm always intrigued by mixed media, I do like it. Actually, another book on here I got for that reason as well. But when I started looking into it, I was like, okay, this seems like it could be really fun. I haven't unsealed it yet, but I'm really excited about this one. It was expensive and that feels like kind of a treat, but I'm very intrigued by this. We'll see, we'll see how I do. I, I enjoy the interactivity, interaction, whatever the right noun there is, of mixed media books where you're kind of participating in the meaning making and in the story making. So yeah, we'll see how this one goes. Oh, a pre-order I have is The Atlas Six by Olivy, 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 I don't know. Olivy Blake, which you're gonna be seeing in a vlog that's gonna go up here in the next week or two. Uh, I pre-ordered this based on all of the hype I've heard from people loving this on Book Talk. This is the, the tour release. So this was independently published and now it's getting released from tour. And I'm excited to have an opinion on this because I know there's a lot of people who think that this is very overhyped and then there's a lot of people who also really enjoy it. So we'll see where I fall on that spectrum. Okay, and then my last of just like no specific plans, but just went for it, were last month's Book of the Month Club picks for me. So for one, uh, speaking of mixed media, I've always meant to get to World War Z, An Oral History of the Zombie War by Max Brooks. This has been out, I think, for like 10-ish years. It's basically an oral history of a fictitious plague. And it also has some mixed opinions on it, but I really am intrigued by the idea that it's like interview style and kind of a version of mixed media. So this was an add-on that I put on to my main pick last month, which was The Cartographers by Peng Shepard. I believe this is her second novel. Yeah, I think this is her second novel. And I just, I hadn't had this on my radar, but the pitch was really cool. Basically, it seems like it's sort of like a fantasy, a potentially like fantasy-ish mystery because her dad is a famous cartographer who is found dead in the New York Public Library and now she has to find out why he was killed and I think try to stay alive herself. So I think that this just sounded like a very Mara premise, so wasn't on my radar, but I'm very intrigued by this. Okay, so those were all of the ones that were like somewhat egregious. <laughs> the rest of these I at least have a specific reason, purpose, or I have already read them, so 
we're, we're doing okay, right? Book of Dreams by Nora Roberts is a bind up I got from Target of two of her Donovan legacy books. I got the other bind up they had last month, I think. So you guys know for reading Roberts, I'm constantly just acquiring some Roberts, uh, which I will get to eventually because I plan to read every single Nora Roberts book that exists. Then hilariously, because I had just done a reaction to my 2021 anticipated releases video and was like, oh, I don't, you know, Clear in the Sun, I would read it, but it's not necessarily actively on my radar. Well, like two days later, my coworker picked it for our workbook club. So Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro is a, I believe it's, I think it's like literary sci-fi. The same way that Never Let Me Go is literary sci-fi. I think that's the vibe here. I have seen somewhat mixed reviews, but I know that in that video, when I mentioned that I wasn't actively interested in this one anymore, a lot of people commented and said, no, no, I really do think that you would like that one. So I'm intrigued. I'm not mad she picked it. And it just makes me laugh in terms of the timing, but I got this one for book club. And then the other three are all sequels to series that I am reading and enjoying. So one is A Line to Kill from Anthony Horowitz. This is the third in his series that starts with the word is murder. So I think I saw a price drop on this one, which is why I went ahead and grabbed it. Jade War by Fonda Lee. So I read and enjoyed Jade City with my friend Leanna in March. Uh, I do plan to continue with the series eventually, I hope sometime this year. Not exactly sure when, but I'm gonna keep going in the series. So I went ahead and picked up the sequel. And then I very much enjoyed Killing November. So I picked up the sequel, which is Hunting November. And this is only a duology. I'm really hoping that this was planned as a duology and it wasn't meant to be a trilogy and the third one just never got published. That's gonna make me sad. But I thought that Killing November was super fun. It's like, YA action adventure mystery kind of thing, maybe sort of like YA Dan Brown vibes with like an assassin, like a, a whole secret society of assassins. And the first one was really fun excited to see what happens in the second one. Okay, and then the rest of these are either books I've already read or things for collections. So I bought and read How to Keep House While Drowning by Casey Davis. I talked about this in my work commentary video. So if you want to see more thoughts there, you can see that in that video. But this is basically about sort of care tasks and ways to approach them that comes from a place of moral neutrality. So short, but very helpful, I think. And I also read and did, was very entertained by Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. I think by the time you're seeing this video, you will have already seen my month wrap up. So I think I talked more about that in there. And yeah, this is not that good, I guess. Like technically I have some critiques of this, but it's just my kind of book. It's like a serial killer, not, it's it's basically a take on and then there were none, but a non isolated version of it. But a serial killer is coming after these different people and we were trying to figure out why. Uh, and it's just, it's entertaining. So I can't defend that this is like one of his best books or like a great thriller, but this is just my kind of book. So I just had a really good time. I thought it was fun. I think I gave it like three and a half stars. So there you go. And then three books I picked up because I had already read them in a different format and I wanted a physical copy. So first we have Morning Glory Milking Farm by Sia Nicosta. I am picking this as the July Blades and Bodice Ripper book club pick, which I think will be a very entertaining discussion. We've never done a version of sort of like erotica for that book club before. And I think it's just gonna be a very interesting conversation. So I decided to pick up a physical copy in anticipation of that. And then the two books that I also used in that work commentary video, Work Won't Love You Back by Sarah Jaffe and Laziness Does Not Exist by Devin Price. I gave both of these four stars. I think both of them are really worth reading. If I were gonna, this one is more of a history. This is more kind of like social commentary or more, a little bit more prescriptive ish. So I would say that just know that about the kind of two different approaches, but both of them I think are really interesting, thought provoking, and I think they pair very nicely together. And then I guess the only things we have left are things that I bought for collection reasons. Now, I for some reason bought two Penguin Vitae's this month. I think I got lost in the sauce on timing for this, but I usually get one of these a month. I got, oh, actually, you know what? This one had a price drop. That's why I got it. I got The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. And then I've got The Color Purple by Alice Walker. This, I had kind of forgotten about it, but when I got it and was inputting it and thinking about it, I realized that I actually did read this 
as like a 12 year old after I saw the movie, which I would not recommend. I don't think 12 year old Mara was really ready for this book. I don't think I appreciated it and I think it was too much for me at that age. But it is an objectively great book. There's a reason why it's included here. And then The Sun Also Rises. I don't think that this is a Hemingway that I've actually read. So there you go. Whenever I get to my reading Penguin Vitae project that I'll do eventually. This will be in the mix to be read. Then I got another one of these lovely cloth bound Agatha Christie books that the HarperCollins UK team has been putting out for the last few years. This is a collection of short stories that have something to do with summer or sort of appropriate for summer. Beautiful gold foiling. These are just absolutely lovely books and I've got it lovingly displayed in my bedroom little bookshelf deal. So this is lovely. And then we had a Penguin Cloth Bound Classic come out this month, On the Road by Jack Kerouac. What's really interesting is that even on camera right now as I'm looking at it, it looks oranger than it actually is. I think when I did my Instagram picture, I tried to put it next to the other yellow Penguin Cloth Bounds because it actually really is more of like a mustardy, brown orangey kind of yellow. And I, I love the color. I think the color is my favorite part about it. I'm not a Jack Kerouac gal. Well, not for me. This is a purely collection buy, but it is very beautiful and it, the completionist in me struggles to not just pick up all the Clothbound classics. So anyway, with all that being said, that was me going a little crazy this month. Um, but the reason I didn't kind of realize I was going as crazy as I did is because actually if you look at the stats I've been compiling month over month, I'm still net negative on adding to my TBR. So I added 15 books to my TBR this month, but I read 17 off of my physical TBR. Or I got 17 off of my TBR. So the net reality is that I'm down two for the month. And so far for the year, I'm down eight. When I do my quarterly wrap up and stats, I'll check in and make sure that I've not missed anything. Sometimes with the ebooks in particular, I just like forget that I got them. So I'll, I'll double check. But right now I'm doing pretty good over Overall of not growing the size of my TBR, even as I continue to buy what seems to be an unreasonable number of books. My rationale is as long as I continue to read them at the pace that I have been reading them, you know, it all comes out in the wash, right? That's my justification. Anyway, moving swiftly onwards, thank you so much once again to Book of the Month for kindly sponsoring today's video. You can get your first month for $9.99 with the code GETFUN and the link below. So thank you once again to them. I think that will do it for this video. So definitely let me know below if you have been buying any fun books recently, if there's any new releases that you are really looking forward to. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon.